we cover this story right here on PIX11. The search for a bomber in Times Square conducted by the men and women of the FBI. I look for my team, I look for my counterparts, and the first thing he goes, what do we have here? And what they tell me is there was a t-shirt vendor right on the corner of 45th and Broadway. We saw an individual get out of a car, a Nissan Pathfinder, and take a lighter and toss it in the passenger seat. And then you heard this little pop, 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 which was almost like a firecracker going off and stuff. And then the sparks inside the car, you could see them. At that point, the t-shirt vendor sees a fire start to engulf the car. And when that happened, everybody just started running. FBI True takes you into the world of law enforcement as they solve some of the biggest crimes from gangs, the mob, and terrorists. Our next two guests are former agents who have worked many of these cases. Here with us is Peter Licata, who is one of the FBI's top bomb experts. He dealt with more than 300 improvised explosive devices on missions to Iraq. We also have Greg Erie, who worked organized crime and intelligence cases. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Fascinating to watch that clip, especially for us, because we, we covered that story when mm -hmm. it happened. You guys were there in real time as well. Let me begin with you, Peter. Um, tell us about y exactly your specialty with the FBI. I mean, 300 improvised devices and a heck of a lot of devices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wasn't just me, though. I was, there's, you know, I work yeah. with a pretty large team. But, yeah, it's it's uh, it's on-the-job training a lot of times is professional development. Wow. Um, you cannot be complacent in the line of bomb technician work or hazardous device technician work. You mm -hmm. always have to stay one step ahead of the bad guy. Wow. wow. And Greg, you were recruited from the U.S. Air Force? I was. It uh, seems like a million years ago, but I uh, was recruited by some FBI agents and joined in 1998. Wow. You both worked on that Times Square case back on May 1st, which was 2010, but it feels like it was really yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. What do you remember, I guess, you know, we heard you in that, in that short clip there about what exactly unfolded, but what exactly was going through your minds when you first arrived on the scene? Go ahead. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a strange moment because uh, they had roped off in uh, Times Square for blocks, so mm -hmm. as soon as you cross under that the very famous yellow line, yeah. It was like a horror movie. It was dead quiet. We've never seen Times Square evacuate it that quickly before. Uh, and then got onto the scene and where Pete was already assessing what turned out to be a very large explosive device. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how did things pan from there on out? I mean, was it was it easy? Was everything coming together right away? Or was it really, a, you had to dig for You have to dig. It, it, it's, 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 it's time tested uh, scenarios that we've worked with our counterparts with the NYPD bomb squad. We work together, we work off each other on thoughts and questions and the way forward. And it's never easy, it's not supposed to be easy. Mm -hmm. um, and you just try to do the best you can to keep up with it and assess the situation, provide leadership with a concise answer on what the hazard potentially could be and you work from there. Yeah, you know, we often hear in, in situations like that, joint operations, joint operations center, and coordination with other, mm -hmm. other agencies as well. How coordinated really is it? And is there a bit of a competition for somebody to find the person before somebody else so they could take credit? We, we'll have our kerfuffles as law enforcement <laughs> agencies uh, before, but when the balloon goes up like it did in this case, yeah. everybody forgets that. And yeah. we're all working together and everybody falls right into, here's my piece, how do I make sure everybody understands what's happening? And it really has to be that synergy that's working yeah. together and it's the best of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the show then. How much do we actually learn about the inner workings? Because I know you don't want to give away all your trade secrets. <laughs> so how much do we learn? It's it's pretty, this is realistic. Yeah. So as opposed to some of the, you know, the fiction shows the mm -hmm. actors, writers, they're doing yeah. the best they can. It's a drama. This is real life and more, this is how it happened. Um, and most of the rest of the show, not just our episode, it, it, I think it does a good job of portraying agents, uh, male and female task force officers, as we're normal human beings. Um, we're out here, we're they, we don't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, they're yeah. out there doing, uh, doing the best they can, working hard, dedicated, um, they believe in the mission. And their job is, at the end of the day, is to support and defend the Constitution and put bad people in jail. It, the crime doesn't get solved in an hour. No, right? it does <laughs> not. It, does, not. it yeah. does. We wish it did, but it yeah. definitely yeah. does not. Uh, you know, so when you look at the, the landscape, because this is real life, right? Mm -hmm. This is your exactly. I mean, it's really your life portrayed on the screen, too. When you look at some of the other shows that are out there that may be a little more fictional, they always say that they use FBI you know, people to help them get the storyline straight. But how far-fetched are some of these shows? Well, I'd say far-fetched. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, you're trying to entertain people. The, the difference between the reality, the documentary, and what you see on TV is those TV shows are made to entertain you. 
this show in particular is made to tell you what really happened and mm -hmm. how it does really happen. And as Pete pointed out, it doesn't happen in an hour, yeah. and it takes a full team. Uh, we represent dozens and dozens of other law enforcement officers and FBI agents right. who participated and had a really critical role in this. Is that yeah. what you hope the real takeaway is from this show? That, yeah, that's what it is. And, and just to, to know that there are still men and women out there doing the right things mm -hmm. and trying to keep America safe while we used to have a saying, you know, while people are out there working while you're sleeping safely at night. Yeah. And they're continuing to do that on a, on a daily basis. Yeah. People are fascinated by this. I, I mean, I think you guys, I know. This, is, this is where it's at right now. I'm in the a world true crime junkie. Seriously. <laughs> I am. Uh, you're on to something here. Great to have both of you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Our you. pleasure. Thank you. FBI True airs tonight on CBS, streams live and on demand over on Paramount Place. Great to have both of you here.